everyone uh, welcome to the first session of the acing the intern drive series which is the resume building workshop so as you all know a resume is very critical and one of the key judging points whenever uh, you will be preparing for your internship and applying for them so one thing to keep in mind is a resume may not guarantee selection but a bad resume resume definitely definitely guarantees rejection so you will see this that whenever you apply for companies after the online test they select a few students for the further interview rounds so for these rounds there is a the interviewers first may go through your resume and and ask you questions from it so keep in mind that a resume is a good professional resume is necessary for you to get a company that you want so one thing i want to add is you need to start making your resume as early as possible making a resume is a long task so you will need to constantly update it make changes and everything so uh first of all like telling from our personal views i want to say that uh so many companies will first check your resume and then select you for the further processes so what so you all must have a basic idea of what all you should include in the resume right your resume should tell you the brief details about your education your tech stack skills any projects that you have done and also it can enlist all of your achievements but keep in mind that don't make it too lengthy it should be as brief as possible so that the interviewer can get to know you in a quick glance so the basic aim behind making your resume is good is to keep it professional and make it concise so i want to start off by saying that now is the right time to make your resumes because whenever your summer vacations will start you will be busy doing uh, different projects or participating in coding competitions or practicing on lead code so currently it's the best time for you to prepare your resumes because preparing resumes is not an easy task you need to invest many hours and constantly update it modify it and make the presentation perfect so now is the perfect time to start it so you need to give your constant time and effort and the first one which you make is never the final one so within the next 2 3 months you may do some project or you may have some um achievement like got a good rank in some coding competition finished these many questions on lead code or something like that so whenever you achieve something or do something it's important that your resume reflects it also the cscs apprenticeship program is going to start start through which you will be able to make good projects and also you could add those in your resume too so coming to what all you should include in your resume so you should write all the relevant info so suppose you are applying for software development engineer or some core or some profile that's related to software it's necessary that you include whatever you want the interviewer to see so like if you have done some irrelevant task which is something like uh, say you participated in some photography competition won awards in it so if you want to include that you can make a small extra curricular activity section and write over there but keep the keep your information re restricted only to the profile that you are applying for so relevant stuff would be a uh, coding competitions anything related to technology some app that you have developed any courses that you have taken or anything related to computer science and stuff so what you can write over in the relevant info section would be your educational qualifications so where have you completed your schooling and uh, college you could mention your you have to mention your exact cgpa under educational qualifications 
then you can include any internships or projects that you have done previously previous internships or projects creates a good reflection of yours in the eyes of the interviewer so when you have previous tasks the interviewer is many a times impressed that this isn't his first opportunity he has some experience of how it is to work in a group or anything that you have done previously so online courses could also be included that are related to the job profile for example you have completed a python course a java course or whatever even that you have learnt in your curriculum which could include data structures and algorithms object oriented programming it's necessary to uh, enlist all these courses in your resume all the relevant core subject subjects excuse me okay so coming to the next section so you it's important to write your experience and education so whenever you write it's necessary to mention uh it's necessary to write the start and end date time so suppose you were working for, on a project or you were do, doing an internship it's necessary that you write the start time whenever the internship started and whenever it ended so that the interviewer gets an idea for how long did you complete the project or for how long were you working on it so for projects and interns write key achievements or the works you have done don't write a long paragraph describing your project so keep in mind to just to write one to two sentences that will perfectly describe your project also one thing i want to add is write stuff that you are perfectly sure about because if the uh, interviewer asks you some questions on the project that you have done and you are not able to answer it it creates a bad impression and your chances become difficult so i would like to add so uh, i would like to emphasize on the fact that keep your resume is honest don't add anything that you have not done or not or are not confident about so for skills you can uh, you can add whatever tech stacks you know which whatever coding languages you have learned or whatever frameworks like django or react or node that you have learned previously so whenever you mention any skill it's important that you have a basic knowledge about it because many a times what happens in your interview rounds is that the interviewer opens your resume he goes through it he then views whatever skills you have skills you have written and whenever he notices that you have written something he may or may not ask you a question but don't write it unless you are very sure about it so i'll hand over the mic to chenma he will explain it the following to you yeah thanks chaitanya okay so whenever you you'll get started with making your resume the first and foremost thing that you'll do is choose a template and remember that uh, don't make your resume from scratch there are a lot of good templates out there and using templates you'll save a lot of time and your resume will look really good yeah so while choosing templates there are two options available either you could go for a vertical format or a horizontal format so you can choose any of the two though uh, a recruiter from a recruiter point of view it's easy for them to grasp more information in less time in a horizontal format so all so i'll explain what vertical format and horizontal format is first so a vertical format is basically like a portrait mode and horizontal format is like a landscape mode so uh, for internship and placements we don't have a lot of pages to fill and stuff so vertical format and horizontal format are both equally good and it's a personal choice so the the point that is written that a horizontal point horizontal horizontal format is easy for is easy to grasp that is more valid when you've worked 
a lot of years in the industry have done further education and masters and uh, you have to present a lot of information but for us either works and it's a personal choice then uh, make sure there's enough space in the resume and it is not heavily stuffed with information so uh, if if it if it's very if there's a lot of information and it is irre irrelevant then it looks cluttered and cluttered it gives a bad impression to the recruiter so your it should be evenly spaced and line should be left between points you shouldn't club a lot of points together and it should be uh, it should look neat and organized then the next important point is you must stick to one basic color as a general rule i'd say using more than two colors is a big no you can use one one dark color like black uh, violet or uh, dark blue but honestly i'd say stick with black and white only unless you have a good sense of color and it looks good so and color colorful resumes don't look professional so definitely don't go for many colors you could use two colors if you are colors and you can make those go The next point is use bullet point. Hello. I think there is some internet issue from your side. then coming to and uh so coming to proofreading so you uh just hold on a second audible now yeah it's fine uh, you can like start from two minutes back yeah i'm audible yeah yeah you're the uh, audible and easy uh, should i start from uh, two minutes back like uh, enough space you were there enough space in the resume not have it stuck okay yeah so uh, make sure there's enough space in your resume the points that you add are evenly spaced out and make sure that it's not cluttered because a cluttered uh, resume gives a bad impression about your resume and hence about you as well then stick to one basic color don't use too many colors it looks unprofessional and it doesn't look nice so you can use dark color if you want to use a color like a uh, violet dark blue or black i would recommend you to stick with black and white because it it looks the most professional but you can use one color that's fine as well then if you have to list your uh, list your say text stacks that you are familiar with under uh, in your resume then use bullet points to describe that if you write them in a para or separate them by commas or anything it looks it doesn't look nice bullet points look more systematic and organized then coming to the fonts that you should use in your resume uh, use simple fonts like arial times new roman and avoid using comic sans type of fonts so the comic sans if you are aware of it it looks like it's the font that is used in comics and it looks very unprof unprofessional so stick with simple fonts proofreading is a very important 
part of making your resume. So the resume will consist of a lot of update, updating and your first resume won't be your final resume. You'll have to keep editing it, adding more things to it. And once you're finally done with when you think you've made a good resume and you don't have anything more to add, make sure that you give the your your resume to your friends and family so for, to proofread. Make sure that there are absolutely no errors in it. Check, recheck and check again. Also, there should be no mistakes in dates, spelling, grammar, punctuation. This is very important because if there are mistakes in spellings and grammar, grammar, it might convey that your, your communication skills are not up to the mark or uh, basically it also sh shows that you have a careless attitude. You have one document to show to your recruiter who you are and it is of utmost important importance that there are no errors in it. Yeah, and you you should definitely ask a friend or relative to read it for errors and make sure that are that there are none. OK, so let's come to some tips and tricks of making a good resume. The first and most important point is impactfulness is not equal to length. It is never the case that a long resume will always be a good one. A resume should be as short as possible and should deliver maximum amount of information in less space. Basically, the recruiter should at one glance and with very less time should get to know you. So don't create lengthy resumes. One page should be more than enough. In special cases, when you uh, like when you have a lot of experience in the industry or you have a lot of things to add to your resume, then it can be of more than one page, like two pages maybe. But for now, try and strictly restrict yourself to one page. Then uh, never give too many personal details. So in a resume, your name, email ID and phone number are more than enough. You you there's no need to give uh, your address or uh, your who who you live with and your family members details and all address can be added but again it's a matter of opinion and uh, it is not necessary but you can if you want to but these three things should definitely be there your name email id and phone number and the third point is under educational details, mention your accurate CGPA. So companies uh, during their recru uh, recruiting procedure, they'll definitely cross check your CGPA. Make sure that you don't uh, bluff it because then they'll definitely reject your resume if you have lied anywhere on your resume. So make sure it's very candid and you don't bluff at all. So I would like to add a few points to this. So the first point that I would like to emphasize on is before you start making your resume, write all your information, like whatever achievements you have done, whatever courses you have completed, whatever uh, important milestones that you have achieved, let it be in your coding competitions or your ac academic, some extra, not extra curricular, but some extra stuff like either machine learning or web development. So whatever you want to include in your resume, first make a list of that somewhere, either on a paper or in a document somewhere, and then start making your resume so that you don't miss out on anything. So that's one thing. And another thing that I would like to add is place yourself in the shoes of the recruiter. So if you were a recruiter, how would you like a resume to be? You obviously wouldn't want it cluttered, filled with too much information. So whenever recruiters go through the applicants, they might be browsing through each resume for two to three minutes, right? They want to give more time than that. So make sure it's as concise as possible and include whatever information that is relevant only. So if you have achieved some 15 achievements, make sure that you, they are worthy to be put in the resume. So if you have many achievements, one thing you could do is 
pick up the top three to four achievements and then include those in your resume. Okay, so in your resume, men mention only those things that you're sure about. They may go into, into the details of anything you mentioned in your resume. So if you have done something like you've learned something and if you add it into your resume, there's a high possibility that whatever you have added, the recruiter, if he knows about that, he'll ask you and he'll keep on going into detail about that particular topic. So make sure that you add things that you that you know 100% and you're confident about answering. Don't at all. So uh, if you have done basic hello world, uh, hello world program or just started with some language, don't at all add that language and add the things that you definitely know. Then coming to your uh, profile links that you add. So definitely add a hyperlink to your profiles like LinkedIn and if possible GitHub and other coding platforms like CodeChef, CodeForces that you want the, your rec recruiters to have a look at. So providing a hyperlink serves two purposes. One, it doesn't look shabby and if, when you click on it, the your recruiter won't have to, if he wants to check your uh, profiles, then he won't have to copy paste the links into his browser. Just clicking on it, he, he can view your profile at ease. So that's less work for him and it will definitely matter. Then always use reverse chron chronological order everywhere. So a uh, reverse chron chronological order means uh, keep the latest things that you've done first. So if, in your education, you'll write here in NIT Warangal first, then you'll write which college you are in 11th and 12th, then you'll write which school you are in till 10th. So that's the reverse chronological order. Yeah, and so keep on updating your resumes as you get any new skill intern project or anything relevant to your profile. So we all expect you to get started with your resumes as soon as possible. So whatever you have right now will be added to your resume. And then over the course of the next three, four months and the summer, including the summer, you might do some new courses, projects and learn new skills. So you should keep on updating your resume with all the new things that you're learning so that, uh, the, so that your recruiter knows what all things you have till date. Yeah. And in the end, the key tip is to keep it simple. You shouldn't complicate it. Your, your recruiter, the company who's coming at, at using minimum effort, they should know who you are as a person and what all you know. So the key is to keep it simple. Complicating it will just create a bad impression and they won't know who you are candidly. That I would like to add is uh, apart from academic courses and studies that you have done, if you have any notable mentioning extracurricular activity, like you have played at the national level for some sport or you have done some social work, like Chinmay here has volunteered for COVID services during the pandemic. So he was volunteering. So if you add something like that, it also helps in creating a good impression about yourself as a person in the mind of the recruiter. So just don't just make sure that you don't make this extracurricular activities part too lengthy, just one or two notable activities that you have done apart from academ academics will suffice. So this is also necessary. So you guys can ask any doubts if you have. Other third years, if you have any doubts, uh, if you have any inputs that you would like to add, please do so. Yeah, you guys can like unmute now. We have given unmute access to everyone. So if you have any doubts, you can 
can mute and ask otherwise you can put in chat box and uh, don't worry we will be sharing ppt as well as a uh, few of example resumes from our dios yeah so uh, now we'll show you all a few resumes from of your senior seniors so you'll get idea of how a resume should look so i've done this resume it's in vertical format so as you can see i've divided the page in two columns so after dividing it in two columns one thing you can notice is i've made hyperlink so suppose i click here on portfolio my portfolio will open or or like you can keep clicking clickable links over here for all of your profiles like github linkedin code forces code chef one thing that you can notice is here in experience like if you are if you have many experiences or many achievements keep them in the reverse chronological order if not time keep the most important ones at the top because whenever a recruiter looks at your resume he might just read the first two three achievements and then move on so keep so keep it in mind that you mention the most important achievements at the top and the less important ones below so as you can see i've just used one color black and white over here and use different font weightages for title content and other things one thing that i would like to add is make sure you use bullet points as it makes the as it makes your resume more presentable and professional you can also observe that i haven't written complete sentences everywhere even if you write complete sentences make sure you don't make it lengthy just explain all of your projects or all of your uh, experiences in just a short in one to two lines that would be recommended so over to the next resume yeah so the previous resume that you saw of chaitanya was uh, in the vertical format this is an example of a resume in the horizontal format so first you should add your name at the top then your phone number and email id and then get links that you will that you want people to see so and then your resume should be divided into these things should be there in, in your resume education projects skills coursework and the previous experiences roles and responsibilities that you have handled and your achievements so this is one clean and neat Uh, so in this horizontal view you can see that reading is easier and it looks nice like in one glance you will get more information because you don't have to focus on two columns at once you just have to scroll and read what's in front of you so uh, the reverse chronological order that i was telling about was first your college then your school like in 11 12 junior college and then school she hasn't mentioned your school her school year but you could add that and add your gpa in 10th and 12th okay let's come to the third resume yeah so here you can see a color being used in the resume this also looks decent a dark color like purple dark blue you you could use don't definitely don't go for light colors like yellow and uh, maybe light brown or something which won't be readable on white go for darker colors 
you have to try and make it as readable as, as possible make it systematic organized and use good color even if you don't use color black and white is also perfectly fine yeah so education courses achievements links and here you can see in skills this is a nice thing to do which you could definitely go for so uh here she has listed skills and she has listed how proficient she is in that particular skill so this gives the recruiter an idea of how in depth he should go about certain topic and uh basically it gives a more candid uh, candid representation of who you are and what you exactly know for example i had listed python in my resume but i had just used it used it for data science and uh, machine learning so when the recruiter started asking me questions on python i remember i had told him right away that i i've just used it uh, in machine learning and data science and i haven't learned data structures in python so uh, i am not that proficient in it but i am acquainted with it so and always remember that even if uh, even if the recruiter asks you, asks you any question make sure that if you don't know it you can just say i don't know and uh, tell him that you have learned only this much or you don't know this tech, tech stack in detail bluffing should never not, should never be done and writing this uh, like bullet uh, grading yourself and your proficiency in this skills is a nice thing that you could follow <laughs> yeah so one point that i would uh, add is that uh, so right now it's the best time to start making your resume so what i would like to tell is that uh, through this acing the intern drive series we are planning a, a building resume workshop part 2 so what you have to do is we will after this session we will give you a link to all these resumes which you can take a look at in order to make your resumes better use uh the use your time fruitfully this weekend to create a resume and then we will be sharing a google form wherein you can submit your resume and the cca team will review uh, review your resume and then give you updates as to what can be improved what you could add and all so make sure you make so make sure you complete your resume by this weekend just a brief one and then you can constantly update it over the next 2 to 3 months also there's a good website where you can get the templates for all these resumes that we have shown so that website is called overleaf.com and we will and these the software that is used for this making these resumes is latex so it's not tough to learn that but it's good if you make your resume on your own invest at uh, around 3 to 4 hours this weekend and come up with a good resume we will give you a google form through which you can submit it and you can get it reviewed in our next session which i think would be conducted on 10th of february if i'm not wrong so that date is to be finalized yet but it will most probably a week be a week from now so make good use of your time this weekend to come up with a resume yeah that's all if you have any doubts you can ask right now you can unmute yourself and ask or if you are comfortable typing you could ask in the chat box as well yeah and like majority of you have like similar doubt that uh, you don't have many things to mention and uh, you are not part of Clubs and also, yeah, it's totally fine if you don't have many things to write right now. But uh, at least, yeah, everyone will have educational details and uh, uh, the LinkedIn accounts and GitHub accounts and coding platform profiles. You need not be a high rating uh, coder, but if you have a profile, 
just mention it right now because it will automatically get updated. Yeah, right. So it's best if you make it right now, you can constantly update it. And even if you haven't done any extra course as such right now, you can include whatever courses you have learned within the college, which are essential for your internship, like data structures and algorithms, object oriented programming or database management system. So after the semester, you all of you might all of you will have a project in DBMS, right? So you can add these changes later, but you can mention them right now in your resume and update it over the next two to three months. Yeah, so like coming to the courses which you can mention, like you can mention if you are a circuit, uh, circuital branch, uh, you will have a DSA definitely, so you can mention that. And for CAC, you can mention DSA, DAA, DPMS, and OOPS. These are like the major courses, and like you will get questions asked in your interview from this. And uh, for other branches, like uh, you can have PSCP and uh, uh, if you have completed any like the DPMS and OOPS are something that you can do online also like from YouTube and all. So if you have learned from those platforms, you can definitely mention them in your review. Yeah, so what will be the, there's a question, what will be the role of projects in internship? Like are they compulsory? So uh, for internship they are, it's okay if you don't have any project in your resume because they really don't expect you to ha have done much till now you should be strong in dsa if you're applying for a uh, cse like coding profile and software profile internship and i guess in cse you will have one compulsory dbms project that you have to do this semester you could definitely do that if you are if you do it by yourself and you know exactly what you've done in it and you are aware of the tech stacks used. So one person has asked, I'm presently in my second year. Is it too late to learn something? So I would say that it's never too late to learn, start learning. So you can start by learning DSA. If you have some recorded lectures from other branches, you can watch their courses, whatever they have taught, and then start coding on platforms like CodeChef or Code Courses, and it's never too late to start. I personally started coding on platforms like CodeChef and Code Forces almost in March of like last year, March, and I'm just one year senior to you. Like I started pretty late, but I would like to add it's best to start early. So don't delay it even further, but it's perfectly all right to start even now. Uh, if it's possible, try to ask doubts in like by unmuting because, uh, you, like you, we might miss your chat and you will feel like you are not replying. It's better if you ask in like unmute and ask. Someone asked that what is CAC apprenticeship? So basically it's a um, uh, internship program uh, for third years, where third years will be making a project uh, on particular domain. Uh, those are like web development, app development, machine learning. And a uh, few second years will be joining them and uh, learning along the process, like how actually uh, project building works from scratch to the end. So, yeah, there won't be a major rule for second year, but uh, definitely they will get to learn a lot rather than working.
so one of you have asked right now solo project or group project so i would like to add that if you have a group project it the interviewer would get to know that you're a team player you can work in groups and coordinate so group projects are good but make sure you understand everything that has been done throughout the course of that project and make sure you have contributed enough in the project so if the a recruiter goes through your project like if you may have a github repository and all for that so if the interviewer goes through that make sure you are able to answer all questions if if it's done solo you will obviously be able to answer that because you have done it by yourself unless you have copied it from somewhere so group projects are also appreciated yeah i would like to add something more on it like uh, if you have done group project uh, you should have answers for some questions uh, like you will get some of these questions like what what was your role in uh, the project uh, uh, did you face any problems uh, with your teammates while doing the project uh, how did you solve conflicts uh, uh, if any came so these are like the major questions you will be asked so be ready for them if you are mentioning any group project and uh, don't worry about projects too much because even if you don't have any project in technical uh, for everyone uh, there will be a dms project for like uh, not everyone no, every cac second year you will have a dms group project where you will be uh, working on a database uh, in team of 223 and uh, you all will mention it in your resume so don't worry if you have if you don't have and if you have then it's fine but if you don't have any other project then it's also fine like many of uh, second years uh, didn't have um, any other project and they got interns so one person asked me uh, dbms and dupes are needed for software intern uh, are it, is it needed because i only know c++ and a little bit of tsa and web development so i've started web web development should i write it in resume i'll be with only these three so should i learn more now so uh for getting an internship at least for the i'm talking about the coding profile here for cse students so uh and the circuit branches a company will 70 to 80 percent focus on dsa itself and rest 20 percent will be uh, focus will be split on dbms and op so uh, it's better to learn because you should be able to answer and it is in your syllabus as well and you can write web development in your resume depending on how much you've done so if you are good at it and if you in the next you still have a three three four months with you right so you can learn a bit more and do some uh, project on it which which will which is worthy of being added to the resume and even if the recruiter starts asking you can always mention at first how much you have done and uh, how proficient are you in web development one person was asking can putting interesting projects be a substitute if academic performance is average or below average so I would say yes, because like if you have a low CGPA, you could, uh, you can say to the rec recruiter if he says anything about it, like that you are busy in extra activities like projects and all, and that's why you have a low CGPA. So there's always a trade-off, like if you aim for CGPA and have a high one, it you won't be finding enough time to do project. But if you have a less CGPA, you can, definitely compensate by making good projects yeah and same goes for competitive programming as well like if you don't have, if you are not good at development uh, and you are also not good at uh, like academics because of some theory subjects then you can go for competitive programming and like have a really high rating on code forces and code chef and you can definitely 
mention them I like they will shine more yeah, so. and uh, for like a software project uh, it is not necessary that your project is like a complete full stack project which includes front end and back end board it can be a front end sim uh, simple project as well just uh, it had like you should know everything uh, in your project like whatever you have done it, it should not be a copied uh, copy pasted project you should know every inch detail of your project even if it's very small or uh, it's a huge problem For CAC people, you have to do DBMS project on your own. Also, like for people who don't have DBMS and OOP in their curriculum, you can learn the basics of it. So it's not that every company will ask you about DBMS and OOP, but most companies do ask. Some may not ask, some ask. So you can even say that even if even when the course was not in my curriculum, I have learned the basics of it and that would be a plus point. So it's better if you learn the basics of OOP and DBMS. It would be a bonus. Yeah, for CAC it's mandatory because like there you don't have any uh, window to like it was not taught because uh, they know what is in your curriculum. So. Uh, GBMS and OOPs are mandatory for CAC. For other branches, it's better to have either of one result. Then you have better chances over other uh, candidates because at last it's all about competition. No, the aptitude is not required for uh, SD interns. Yeah, Santosh, uh, internships uh, recruitment will start at end of July. Like for us, it was around end of July. For you also, it will be around end of July or maybe starting of August. Not before July, definitely. Yeah. For Oracle, there will be aptitude, but uh, it won't be that much that you need to prepare for it. Like, it will be normal. Uh, Non-circuital departments do get on-campus internships. So most of the companies that come will have only, will only be open to say CAC, EC, Triple E, which are the circuit branches so but there are many companies who are open to other branches too like mechanical metallurgy biotech and all so there are not many but you can definitely apply for them and you have a good chance if your basics about dsa and all are good Yeah, Rahul Kumar asked, how long approximately do we have to prepare for internship opportunity? So, like, there is no particular time period, but as early as you start, it's better. So, definitely, you can start from today itself. Yes. Right now, just focus on the resume building part. That's what I mean. So Shitij has asked if I know DBS, DBMS and OOPS, then do I have to give them some proof of it or mentioning my skills would be enough? You should add it to your resume and if they ask questions about it during the interview, you should definitely be able to answer it. And also, uh, if you know DBMS and you have done some project on it or you have used OOPS to make some project 
and applied that knowledge somewhere you could also try and add that to your resume yeah so there's no as such proof that you can give but when the interviewer if he if they ask you should be able to answer so you can add a lot of skills to your resume but just make sure that the ones you add you definitely know about them and you're well acquainted with it so you so that you should be able to answer don't add things that you aren't that familiar with or you've just started doing something so you add it to your resume definitely please don't do that Okay, so try this DSU segment and bit trees. So I would say that these are very rare topics in your online test. So there's a possibility that, that such questions might be asked, but for our year and our previous years, there was at max one problem regarding these. So BST, so binary search trees and binary trees are asked frequently but for for try disjoint set and segment and bit trees that you have said they aren't they don't appear much in the online test so it's okay even if you don't learn those in much depth if i remember correctly there was a segmentary question two years back but it's quite rare yeah so we also are hosting a dsa webinar on 6th of february at 5 pm so you should this is in uh with a tie up with geeks for geeks so uh it will be educational so i definitely recommend you to attend this too If there are any more questions, ask them. We will end the session in a few minutes. Uh, Vedant asked that are the graphs very much important for income? So for two companies like Uber, they ask questions from graphs. And that's also not necessary. But yeah, majority majority cases, they ask questions from graphs. Uh, otherwise, it's totally depend, it totally depends on the interviewer, like what topic they want to ask there is no bound but uh, yeah graph is something that we can ask the de like basic stuff only or the famous algorithms not uh, complex algorithms mostly bfs bfs it's uh, uh, yeah i would say basic you should have basic knowledge about bfs dfs they appear in commonly in online tests as well as they are asked in interview so it's good to be knowledgeable about that uh, there is one doubt regarding blockchain abhishek can you that oh, i don't think in our batch chinma joshi has put any review uh, so chinma joshi can okay, you Chinmay, you can uh, take that out then like if someone wants to plug blockchain skills in his or her resume 
then what should be the level of it? Okay, so uh, what I did basically was I wrote some smart contracts on uh, online compiler. It's a IDE called Remix. So this is a platform where you can practice uh, smart contracts until uh, uh, smart contracts. If you don't know, that is a, a code you write in the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, to practice smart contracts in a level that that's uh, uh, you know for to up to a great level you can use uh, online compilers uh, like remix ide and then make a small project on that or you can use uh, your own softwares like truffle and ganache those are advanced so if you uh, just want to add a blockchain project uh, i think you can develop the front end and then use uh, truffle to uh, make the application and then put uh, the level if you're asking the level it it could be like a small buying and selling or banking like type but don't make it very complex like because the questions they ask are not relatively on blockchain they'll ask you see for me in interviews they asked me questions on blockchain but they were not technically about my project they were about like basics like what is bitcoin and there i struggled a bit uh, so make sure to have general knowledge about uh, blockchain very well if you are making projects on blockchain uh, excuse me Bria. actually i have been studying about blockchain since uh, uh, one week so I, I know the basics uh, of blockchain like bitcoin ethereum and everything else but uh, uh, as you said that uh, try to practice the smart contract for that i have to learn the solidity uh, language so I have seen that solidity language. It is taking at, at least 14 to 15 hours to learn on very good level. So I needed to ask you that it requires that much of level or I need to learn only basics of solidity. So a little bit of confusion. Uh, is there. Yeah, you need to add a smart contracts uh, in your project because without that, how will you make a Ethereum project? I mean, uh, you want to make a project on blockchain, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so you need to have a smart contract for that at least. Like, uh, it need not be a project with full back end, front end, everything connected, deployed. But uh, it could be just the uh, the fundamentals about it. If, uh, you can say. Yeah, Chinma, let me add something. Like Chitin, if you are learning something, you cannot expect you can learn entire up to advanced level in a one go. Like even if you are learning C++, the level of C++ we are learning till now is currently nothing. Like it's like 10 or 20 percent, at most 50 percent. Like if you will go to the company level, they are using advanced C++. So you cannot expect to learn the complete solidity up to advanced level. You can just go Stop to some basic. About- uh, talking about blockchain specifically yeah. uh, to do a project i think uh, you need to have a basic knowledge of uh, node js or uh, a, and its backend equivalent in python django right so for that it, that it will take you or at least 15 20 days to practice node after that you need to have a knowledge on solidity and then uh, you need to have knowledge on react or any other front end uh, language you know and then you have to club all these things together, then you can create a project. So creating a project on blockchain is not a simple task. It's a, it's the blockchain is a field in which there is very high demand, but very low professionals who can do it. So if you want to be serious on a blockchain project, you need to have the knowledge, but, and you need to spend some time selectively. So, uh, let's say if you want to make two or three data, uh, normal projects, uh, we not, not blockchain that might take you one week, two weeks, but. If you start now to make a blockchain project, at least in two, three months, you'll be ready with it, in my opinion. Yeah, that is what I was thinking. It is very complex thing and it would take three to four months for me, at least because I don't know much about front end and back end. I am just learning it now. Okay, uh, then you will have to uh, spend more time on that. It's not, you. nothing will happen in a day or two, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, work so parallel. Want, it's not compulsory to have a blockchain project, obviously, because companies won't come in that field. They'll be in SDE position, right? So, uh, 
block they won't recruit specially for blockchain so if you want to uh, in the intern drive of Warangal, i think uh, it's more mainly about sde so focus on your core related uh, relevant projects and if you want to show blockchain uh, and uh, then be ready with it and start practice it from now itself so that you'll be ready in two three months four months and hello one more thing there is there are platforms like ganache there, there is a ganache -E, you can google yeah yeah these are I've yeah yes these are platforms where you don't have to pay any gas price you don't have to pay any money you can deploy on free your projects so uh, you can show that if you don't want to spend real ether and deploy and then show it right yeah you uh, if i have any, if i have any doubt related uh, blockchain then uh, any senior is there who can you, you can it? you are in second second year yeah i am second year electrical branch then have you joined the blockchain uh yeah, apprenticeship? I have joined. yes i have joined then yeah uh, stay tuned to that okay. we will uh, surely make some projects in that thank you okay thank you Yeah, definitely you can uh, add uh, ML projects in your resume. Okay. ML is equivalent to development. So, yeah, uh, don't worry about interview now. Like, uh, there will be a separate session about interview in upcoming series. Right now, just try to make your resume as soon as possible because um, next week we are having a second session for resume building uh, where like um, third years will be uh, checking your resume and uh, like proofreading basically telling you if there are any errors or what changes you need to make reviewing so yeah, try, uh, we'll release a form soon where you will be uploading your resume and uh, uh, reviewing it. If you have any doubts, uh, ask now. Uh, we'll be closing within time. Yeah, so are there any more doubts related to the resume building session? All doubts related to your intern session will be addressed we will be conducting another intern session meet so if you have any doubts regarding the resume building please do ask right now uh, like, uh, like we, want to, we want a job in software field um, but we do a project uh, related to algo trading like finance plus coding or like that will be helpful as to stand out yeah coding is involved in that right yeah, so it's good to mention also there may be many fintech companies coming to the college to like finance and trading related profile. So it's good to have that on your resume for that those companies and also it's a general coding task, right? So it's good to add it to your resume in my opinion. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yes. Yeah, we can't uh, tell like the uh, ratio and how many people are selecting, but uh, we will try to select as many as like, depending on how many third years we have. No, 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 there isn't any WhatsApp group created, uh, but you will receive updates regarding the selections. Because we got a huge number of responses, that's why it's taking time us, uh, taking time for us to um, filter out. Yeah, one more thing I would like to add is make good use of your time this weekend to come up with your resume. After this session, we will send you a message containing all the resumes that we have used for this presentation which you were asking to show us again so you can take a look at our resumes and use that to build your resumes so that you will have a better generic idea about 
how to place your objects and how to properly space your section so we will also send you link to overleaf.com where you can search for good resume templates yeah so make sure you complete your resume by this weekend and we will share a google form where you can upload it and there will be a resume checking session next week Okay, so I think with this session, uh, you got some basic idea like what is a resume and uh, I hope that all of you would take this opportunity and start building your resumes uh, by this weekend. And so we'll be having another session as uh, like this uh, where we'll be uh, checking your resumes. We'll not, don't worry, we'll not judge you. We'll just guide you and to, to help you make better resume to stand out of others. So I'm hoping that each and everyone who attended the session would take this opportunity. Yeah.